Hello and welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about transgenic plants. We've been talking about different modes of genetic engineering and why genetic engineering is important. But transgenic plant is one of the applications of genetic engineering in modern plant and agricultural research. Okay. Now, there have been a lot of controversies regarding transgenic plants, whether we should use it or not and all these things. But this video is not about controversies and to talk about uh, what is good or not or bioethics. This video is to talk about the overall process that if you need to know what is transgenic plant and how we use this word transgenic in the development of plants. Because I have made another video on transgenic animals that you can also watch how we use that transgenic technology to make a mouse uh, out of it. Now in this case we are going to uh, see how you make plants or plant species so that we can utilize them. So this is a scientific video based on that only. Transgenic plants, uh, whenever we, we use transgenic, this particular term, that means we are going to say something uh, which is not natural, which is not growing naturally in the, in the atmosphere, in the world, okay. So in that case, we are changing the course of nature or natural uh, production of food in case of transgenic plants. Now what we see here is that normally, let's say if a plant, let's say uh, the plant can be, uh, it could be any crop plant that we uh, know of, rice plant, it could be uh, corn plant, whatever it is, that plant has a normal way to grow and a particular temperature, a humidity, the source of nutrients to grow. Uh, that plant has a specific approach against uh, infections, a specific approach of self-protection against uh, the insects and all this stuff. But now, uh, as the condition of world is getting dangerous because uh, the con content of the people, uh, the number of population is rising day by day. So we need to fight against that, we need to give food to everyone. So what we do here, we need more food in less amount of time and we also need better quality food. So all these things is not possible from a one type of variety of any plant. So what we do, we choose some best quality plants and we punch those features together. We want to grab all those features in one plant. So that is the idea where we start thinking about transgenic technology or transgenic way to develop plants. So let's say the transgenic uh, for, for the development of the plant, let's say we need uh, say good food. Good food means uh, let's say if it's, a, if it's a rice, the long grain of the rice, okay, uh, because everyone loves long grain of the rice. That is one thing. Second thing that we also require less time consuming. Third thing that we require it should be. Uh, drought tolerant, it should be uh, let's say infection tolerant, it should be insecticide tolerant and something like that. Okay, so the tolerance should be higher, uh, they can grow in the less time as well as we need better quality food. So these are the way, these are the thinking behind transgenic approach. Because if you need to grab all this thing, this all in one, then you need to use genetic engineering, okay? Because you cannot do that by normal uh, or traditional plant breeding, because that will take years, uh, long, uh, decades to do and achieve the task. So what we do here, <coughs> we know the genetic makeup of all these plants that we eat, right? We know the genetic makeup of the rice, we know the genetic makeup of the corn. So what we can do? Let's say we have a desired gene, that gene will give us better quality food, let's say long grain rice. This is the target, this is our desired gene, <coughs> excuse me. So this is the desired DNA that we want. This is the desired DNA or gene which when inserted in the plant, it will produce proteins that will help to make better quality grain or food source, okay. So this is the interest of ours. Now let's say there is an ordinary, there is a type of ordinary plant that we find, a uh, plant cell, let's say this is the plant cell. That plant cell contains uh, the capability of resisting insect or uh, insect infections. So it is a kind of insect tolerant, infection tolerant type of plant. And it can also be grown in very less amount of time. So all these things are good for this plant, but this plant produces very small poor quality seed or poor quality food. So we need to develop that quality. So if we insert this D DNA or gene inside this plant, what we can get is all in one, right? So what we do, 
we insert it inside the plant cell and then we allow the plant to grow and once the plant will grow it will produce the food we will get better quality food it can be grown in grown very very fast and it, it is insect tolerant insecticide tolerant as well as the uh, infection tolerant right so now how we achieve this task we know the target dna which we need to insert inside the plant but how could you insert a dna inside the plant because if we take and break down the DNA and directly insert in, inside the plant, it is not going to stay for a while. It can be degraded by the plant cell itself. So the idea of gene delivery, there are multiple ways we can do that. We can take the approach of recombinant DNA technology to do this task. How? What we can do, we take this desired DNA and we also take a recombinant plasmid. That plasmid is known as Ti plasmid, Ti. So let's say this is the Thai plasmid. This plasmid is uh, extracted uh, uh, from the agrobacterium tumefaciens, that's a bacteria. Now we take this Thai plasmid, we cleave its specific region and we attach this target DNA with our Thai plasmid. Now we take this Thai plasmid, this complete recombinant Thai vector and then we insert this insert this vector inside the plant cell okay this is one way to do and not only we insert this uh, target dna itself only but also we also have reporter genes which is going to tell us whether our dna of interest actually inserted inside the plant cell or not they are going to tell us so we not only get uh, to insert it but also to monitor whether it's properly inserted or not which is another very important thing so now that is why you constructed this vector it's very important to see uh, what's going on inside so we insert it inside the plant cell now we allow the plant cell to grow and develop and then the plant cell will give us a fully grown plant that has better quality food it can be grown very fast as well as it is insecticide tolerant so everything in the same plant this is one way to go Another way to go uh, of the same pathway is we can directly insert DNA inside the plant cell because you know plant cell has a hardy layer of cell wall surrounding it. So to deliver a DNA inside the plant cell we need to use either gene gun, you know gene gun uh, can be taken to insert this uh, inside. But most of the cases using vectors for the delivery is good. We can also use viral vectors to deliver, you know viruses to deliver this genetic content. Uh, because virus can infect plant so once virus is infecting the plant whatever material inside the virus is there will be inserted inside the plant so our desired gene is attached or is, is pushed inside the viral body now the virus is infecting the plant releasing all the genetic content inside along with its own genetic content it is also going to insert our desired gene inside the plant cell and then the rest of the task will be taken out inside and it will do its job Right? So all these things we can do using the Thai plasmid vector and we can also use that viral vectors in this case. Now this is one example we saw where we want better quality food. To develop that we utilize this scenario. We utilize the help of recombinant DNA technology. There are other ways to produce and there are other approaches to produce the transgenic plant. We call it transgenic because the genetic construct of the plant is from different sources it's not the only plant genome but some other source DNA is also inserted inside the plant that's why we call it transgenic in nature right it's mixed okay now another thing in some cases we not only want good quality food or some some properties but also we want to have some uh, some type of properties in the plant so that we can monitor them or, or administer them manually that means, let's say, uh, let's say the example of ripening of food. Let's say ripening of tomato. We take the tomato ripening. In the tomato ripening, the idea is, you know, we need two types of tomato, both green and red. We need both types of tomatoes. Okay. The green tomato we need for some reasons. We need red tomatoes for, for some other reasons. If you go for the, because as we need both the types of tomatoes in our life, we need to have both or keep both. 
so normally what happens if we develop tomato plants at the very beginning early stages uh, the tomato will be green but then it will turn red and sometimes what happens some part of the tomato becomes green some part is red like the mixture that's the natural way if the, if the tomato grows natural way due to the production of ethylene this ripening effect takes place the coloring is also taken place due to the addition of ethylene okay ethylene is a gaseous hormone that is produced by the plant itself at the later stage of the food production so that food gets ripened and the color is changed for most of the food that we know of the color gets changed and the physiological structure is also gets you know it gets uh, very softer as it matures now here so it can create those those things like green and red spots in the tomatoes it, it won't look nice people want pure green people want pure red so to minimize this effect what we need is that we want tomato to grow normally but we want to have the control of ripening of the tomato we can also achieve that using recombinant DNA technology we can use that using transgenic technology what is the technology the technology we use in this case is known as anti-sense RNA technology anti-sense RNA technology the idea in this case is we take the viral plant viruses you know viruses this is a viral genome inside now inside the virus we insert antisense RNA this is antisense RNA inside the virus inside the virus particle and now that virus particle we allow the plant cell to infect by this virus particle so once this virus particle is infecting a plant cell in that case they will deliver both the genomic content itself as well as the uh, antisense RNA inside the plant. Let's say in this case the tomato plant where it's grown. This antisense RNA, the job of antisense RNA is to silence specific genes. Okay. So if this antisense RNA is removed and released in the plant cell of tomato, in that case though the tomatoes start to grow, at the time of ripening, this antisense RNA is going to degrade all the necessary mRNA which produces ethylene. Okay, so there will be no ethylene produced naturally by the tomato due to the effect of antisense RNA. Okay, so let's say this is the gene which ultimately when translated produce ethylene. Uh, say the mRNA. Let's say this is the mRNA when translated it will produce the ethylene hormone. Now in this case. This antisense RNA will go and attach and it will degrade this mRNA. So there will be no ethylene produced naturally. So by default, all the tomato that is going to produce will be green. All the tomato the plant is going to produce. Early or later, they are going to be green. Okay. And also the ripening effect cannot be shown. Every tomato you will see, is, it will be hard and green. Now, we pluck all these green tomatoes from here. And we sort them out everyone will be green now after that time we what we want to do we want some red tomatoes as well so what we do we, we take some of the green tomatoes and we inject ethylene from outside we spray ethylene from outside you don't have to inject even you can spray ethylene we spray ethylene from outside so that whenever we let's say we separate 50 percent of the tomato and we spray ethylene onto them all those tomatoes will turn red due to the effect. Okay? All those green tomatoes, the 50% of the green tomato will turn red and rest of the tomatoes are green. So by this way, we can get 50, we can get what we desire, that is green tomato as well as the red tomato at the same time in, in separations. So this is another way which gives us more control over a natural food, of a natural source and by using transgenic only it is possible okay so transgenic not necessarily mean that it should be gene to deliver or dna to deliver it could be other ways like antisense rna technology or rnai technology that we can also use to turn off the synthesis of certain proteins to turn off the transcription of certain certain genes that can also help us uh, to prevent and modulate uh, the food sources that we want okay and prevent some protein production on, on food production that we want according to our choice so that is why you know transgenic plant give us a huge room for developing plants and huge idea of, of 
of exploring all these things and modulating so many different stuffs to get products that we want, the food that we want, okay. So that is why transgenic is really, really important because it is a blessing of modern uh, science and technology that we are using, the agricultural technology. Now uh, I am not going to talk about the controversy whether it is right or not because we have dangerous effects of transgenic plant. We see the effect of transgenic using transgenic plant in India as well, that is the BT cotton, it is dangerous. As well as we see some good examples of transgenic, for example, the golden rice, which is rich with vitamins. So this is that's why uh, it is under the consideration whether you are going to do it or not. But uh, we can do, we can play nature here. We can change all this stuff because actually, in some aspect of our life, we have to do to feed that many people, uh, that many population, right? But the rest of the thing is like that. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and definitely share this video with your friends. Thank you.